Good evening, I hope this finds you well and that you've had a good Sunday so far. Tonight as we meet together uh, once again, we are looking at the passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Uh, two weeks ago uh, we thought on faith, last week we thought on hope and tonight we're going to think on love uh, and, and more specifically the love that God has for each and every one of us. And so we spend some time again uh, in this passage of 1 Corinthians 13. Tonight, uh, I'm thankful to Julie Nellis, who's going to lead us in, in our thoughts and in our reflection. And is going to bless us um, with a song as well. One that I'm sure you're familiar with uh, and you'll want to join in on. But as we enter into tonight and into our thoughts uh, and into the biblical um, journey that is ahead of us, let's first pray together. So let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your continued presence with us each and every day. We thank you, Lord, that in this moment, that we're, where we sit, we can know that you're here. And we ask, Lord, that you would give us a stillness in our minds and a peace in our hearts as we come to listen to your word once again and as we come to hear what it is you've placed on Julie's heart to share with us. So God, give us open ears that we would listen well and Father, give us open hearts that we would receive your love and receive your words this evening. Amen. And so now I hand over to Julie. loves me this I know for the Bible tells me so little ones to him belong they are weak but he is strong yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus loves me yes Jesus tells me so. Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gate to open wide. He will wash away my sin. Let this little child come in. Yes, Jesus loves me. First Corinthians chapter 13 The Gift of Love If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and if I hand over my body so that I may boast but do not have love, I gain nothing. 
Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends, but as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, as we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. I'm sure we can all remember Jesus loves me as a child. I grew up singing it, as many of us did, in Sunday school, with Cecil standing at the front, inviting us to sing louder, and a good rising shout on the yes, Jesus loves me in the chorus. I think I remember it turned into a bit of a competition at one point, and I'm pretty sure I was quite up there with, with, with the loudest ones. But it got to the point where the words kind of lost their meaning. And we sang it because we loved the tune and we loved the competition and we loved the fun. But what does that really mean? Jesus loves me. How many of us can boast, yes, Jesus loves me? Without some form of doubt, some form of worry, does he? Me? I wonder what you think of when you think of, of, of the love that someone can show for you. Do you think of a parent, a sibling, a partner, a husband, a wife, chocolate, because <laughs> it's right up there, I have to say. But what do you think whenever you hear the words, Jesus loves you? I remember growing up and walking um, around the streets, doing a bit of shopping with mum. And at the corner of one of the streets, there was always a man standing with his billboard and his, his little flyers that he gave away, talking through a microphone into a, a box. And he always said, Jesus loves you. And they're the kind of people that we used to kind of skirt round and avoid. Because we're a wee bit, oh, don't know if he's a bit of a weirdo. But now as I've got older, I've started to realise that actually the message that he says is true. God loves me. God loves you. Yes, Jesus loves you. Let's have a wee a little bit of a little bit of a look at that word love. What kind of love is this that God has for us? Well, firstly, it's unconditional. There's no limit to it. No ifs, buts, and maybes. No contracts to be signed. No, if you do this, I'll do that. I love you, but only if you do this. There's none of that. God just loves us. It's unconditional. How many of us can say that? We put a condition on so many things in our lives. 
And it's so lovely to have something and someone who will love us unconditionally. Secondly, it's in it's indescribable. It's hard to describe. That feeling when somebody loves you so much. I've heard you've heard it say, and I've heard it say several times that for people in, in relationships that when you know, you know. What does that mean? I don't know. Still trying to figure that one out. When you work it out, let me know. But how can we take that phrase and apply it to what Jesus says? Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. When you know, you know. How certain are you of that? How certain are we of that? That we have a God who will give anything for us. That it's indescribable. There are no words to describe how much God loves us. He does it through showing us. He does different things, little tiny things every day in life to show us how much he loves us. If someone were to say to me, can you describe to me how much God loves you? I don't think I could. I remember a story growing up, a storybook that um, my sister used to love growing up and now my niece has it and it's called Guess How Much I Love You and it's about big nut brown hair and little nut brown hair and then little nut brown hair decides to ask big nut brown hair how much do you love me or guess how much I love you. I love you to the moon and back. And big nut brown hair gets further and further and further away until he can go no further. And then at the end of the story, little nut brown hair realises just how much nut big nut brown hair loves him. A simple children's story but with a powerful meaning. The third way that Jesus loves us is with a never-ending love. Remember another childhood song, God's love is like a circle, a circle big and round, and if you see a circle, no ending can be found. And so the love of Jesus goes on eternally, forever and forever, I know that God loves me. It's never-ending. And although we may divert and go different directions every now and again, God's love goes with us on that journey. It never leaves us. And even when we leave when we leave the circle and go a different direction, God's love continues along that road and is there, unending, unconditional indescribable. I don't think anything can describe how much God loves us more than John 3 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Let's take some time now just to pray for others, for those that are on our hearts. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we know that you are there always with us, surrounding us with your wondrous and almighty love. It's unconditional. It's indescribable. And it's never ending. And Father, especially at this time right now, this is when we need your love the most. Father, we're going through a hard time right now of uncertainty, of illness, of grief. 
And we pray that you will be in that situation, no matter what it is, that your love will flow into our hearts and our minds, that you will comfort those who need comfort, that you will cry with those who are grieving, that you will be a co be company to the lonely, that you will be love for us all. Yes, Jesus loves me. Father, we think of those at the minute who especially have lost loved ones through COVID-19 or through other horrible, horrible illnesses. God, I pray that you will be with them. You will surround them with your love and with your comfort and they will know your presence upon them. I pray for those that are trying to give them words of comfort too, God, that you will give them the right words to say. And sometimes it's not even a word. Sometimes it's just a smile or a text to say, I'm here. We pray, God, for the lonely, for those who are isolated on their own at this time. For those who don't know the kindness of other human beings. Father, we pray that you would put someone into their lives to take away that loneliness. God, show them your love. Yes, Jesus loves you. Father, we thank you that you are an almighty God. who can do wondrous things all the time. We pray for your church, God, that although the church's doors, the building doors are closed, that you are still there, that your people are still there. And we pray, God, that you would pour out your blessings upon them. Thank you, God, for the work of our, our health service, for our key workers, for those putting their lives on the line, for other people. For those showing a little bit of what you showed for us, God, what you did for us. We pray for their protection, for their health and strength. Father, I pray that we pray that they would know how much you appreciate them, how much we appreciate them and how much you love them. Father God, at this time, we ask your blessing on our land. We pray for those further afield who may be feeling the effects of this horrible, horrible disease, this horrible, horrible virus. God, we pray that that you will bring healing where it is needed. That you will bring aid where it is needed. But most of all, God, that you will bring love. That people will share your love. That people will know that they are loved. And can say with certainty, yes, Jesus loves me. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.